This is Living Your Life Well Plan, the 80-20-365 success system invented by my good pal, Adam Vincent Kilmer. I'm your host for these podcasts. My name is Gene Velitis, and welcome to episode number 17. Yeah, we're at 17 already. Hope you're enjoying these podcasts. Uh, and as we always mention right off the top and uh, throughout these episodes, make sure you go to Adam's website, 80-20-365.com, and order your daily planner. Uh, when you have your daily planner, you'll be able to follow along these podcasts, and it's also going to give you a system. It's going to give you a plan that you will apply to your life every single day from the moment you get up until you go to bed at nighttime when you score your day, and you're always trying to have really, really big days. Uh, so get your daily planner. It will become like your cell phone. You will n never let it out of your sight, and the second that it is out of your sight, trust me, you will panic. <laughs> so get your daily planner. Hey, Adam, uh, today on episode 17, we're going to talk about uh, stretching your goals. And I don't have the exact quote, but I know that there, there is a quote that, um, you know, most people, the trouble isn't that they set goals. The trouble is they set goals for things they know they can accomplish. And when you set a goal for something that you definitely know you can accomplish, well, that's not really a goal. <laughs> that's just something that you're going to do. And I, I think in previous episodes, you and I have talked about the fact that when you do get a goal or your uh, 30, 60, 90 day plan, you want that goal or that plan to excite you to the same degree that it frightens you. And when you have those two things going on, that's generally, I believe, when you're on the right track. So how do we stretch our goals and, and what's your philosophy behind goals and, and how people tend to make them in their lives? Well, good morning, everybody, or afternoon, evening, wherever you're watching from around the world. Um, uh, and I love about talking about stretching goals, Gene. And the number one reason I love about stretching goals is uh, I take a look at my own life and I realize that, you know, I'm an immigrant from South Africa, immigrated to the United States. Uh, I, I, I didn't have a green card. I wasn't able to work. I went through the process. Um, I wanted to become, uh, you know, a citizen and, and, and what have you, but it doesn't happen right away, right? You've got to look at everything and say, okay, hey, what's the steps? And it's one thing saying, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to do what's necessary. Uh, but then it comes down to saying, okay, you know, so how do you live the American dream? And then, you know, if I look back on my life, back and I'm like, okay, you know, uh, I had to go from immigrant to man, let me go and start my own business. That was a stretch. Okay. But I knew that if I don't, if I didn't do that kind of a stretch, even though it's risky and there's obviously tons of failure and, you know, things that things like that. Um, I knew that it was going to be an important piece because, um, when you look around you and you say, okay, listen, let me see the universe is giving me back as, as, um, acknowledgement of doing the right thing or what, what I should be doing you really feel it in your gut that you've got to push yourself. And I think that's the biggest thing is pushing yourself to realize that at the end of your life, um, looking back, I, I think there's a couple of things you're going to go over. The first thing is, is like, man, I should have treated people better. And the second thing is I should have had much, much bigger goals because <clears throat> you're going to accomplish your goals along, uh, along the path. And the hard thing about it is, is that you have to have this, you know, deliberate, persistent piece to say, let me stretch it. The other thing is, is that sometimes, uh, you know, you become complacent in your goal setting because like, oh, yeah, I can do that. Oh, yeah, I can do that. And um, you say, hey, you know, I'm on this goal uh, for myself right now to, to uh, you know, put away my first hundred million dollars. Right. That's a big, big stretch. But the good thing about it is, is that. <clears throat> um, it's in the realm of possibility. I'm, on way, I'm well on my way uh, to accomplishing the goal, but it's a stretch. And then the next one after that's like, okay, so what do you do after 100 million? You know, 500 million, a billion? And you say, okay, hey, man, those, and you look at those now and you're like, oh my gosh, those sounds like incredible numbers. But if you really sit down and you get serious about it, all these things are possible. People have done it and uh, people have done it before you, just like, you know, Roger Bannister breaking the four minute mile. People thought it was unbelievable at first, <clears throat> not achievable at first. And then it became uh, a system where, hey, man, you know, I, if he did it or she did it, I can do it. And I think that's the big thing when it comes down to stretching your goals. You've got to review your goals after you've done 30, 60, 90 days, even if you've been on the planner for 
a year or more, you've got to review and go over uh, these goals because what happens is, is that um, the subconscious doesn't really care what you put in it. Okay. So it's looking for, you know, ways to achieve what you really, really desire. And just like in the book, Think and Grow Rich, it's the same stuff, same thing. You've got to be able to push yourself or have something that's going to be pulling you, motivating you to do that little extra bit every single day to say, let's go after uh, my goals and make them bigger. So how, how do you just sit down and, and decide what my goal is going to be? Because I suspect there's a lot of people who have a daily planner now and they're following us along in the podcast, or they may have even taken one of your live courses. They may have never set a goal in their entire life. So if we're speaking to that one person who may have achieved things by chance, I call them, uh, you know, come by chance competence or an unconscious competent. If, if we're telling a person now to direct something specific, to create something specific, to achieve something specific, how would you advise that person to do it for the first time? Because again, we don't want them setting a goal for something they know they, they can actually achieve. We, we want it to be big and scary. And I guess a lot of that comes with, with dreaming about what your goal is. Right. I think the, the other important thing is like, you know, in the purpose finder exercise, and the goal setting exercises that we've done in previous episodes, this is why review is important. You know, um, just like changing a, a workout routine or changing a diet plan or changing the, the color of the paint in your house, your apartment, or buying a piece of land and having a plan to build a, a home there or something uh, along those lines. Um, all, all those are, you know, um, baby steps by themselves. But at the end of the day, in your mind, this great vision gets created. And I think that that's what comes from the dreaming side of the, of, of what you have to do. You know, I used to go and create big, huge dream boards uh, of the things that I wanted to accomplish in my life. And then I'd also find people that were already on that path or doing it, or uh, they showed up as they were accomplishing it. And I said, okay, what are they doing? And every single time I've opened up, you know, uh, a great thinker's book, uh, even the book was a goal, okay? Um, the actual putting it together, the cover, <clears throat> the forward, uh, the writing of it all, uh, the different chapters, all of it was a work in progress. And then finally you got this like, you know, um, finished, uh, finished product. And I think what people have to realize is like, if you start with a finished product in mind as the dream, okay? And then you backtrack from that and say, listen, you know what? Um, <clears throat> hey, you know, the design of this particular house or my business was this, or I need this product you can find a way to make it come about. And that's the trick. That's the, uh, the difference between success, successful and the people who aren't successful. Somebody who's willing to find a way to say, <clears throat> let me go make this bigger. And, and listen, it's, this isn't an easy uh, process, meaning that it's not easy to say, listen, let me just go and build a, uh, you know, a massive business. It takes time. And, and that's the other the key ingredient is, and why we have a time management planner and system is you got to focus, you know, um, if goal setting is massive for you, but you want to have bigger goals, you want to make them scary, you got to say, okay, <clears throat> you know, what would make me scary in this goal? Like, what is it that's going to make me scary? Oh, it, it, it's, uh, you know, it's adding on or building, a, uh, you know, a 10,000 square foot home. Oh my goodness. You know, I haven't done that one before. Okay. So what, what do I have to do to accomplish the goal? Who are the people we're going to need to help us along the way? And then and ultimately, do I have the finances and can I get those uh, to make this goal come apart. So you got to, you got to figure out the ingredients. And the other fun thing is, is that you got to put it all together and the putting it together is part of uh, the 80, 20, 365 system. It's part of it. Meaning that the system is, you know, uh, Hey, let's make a plan and then let's go and work that plan to accomplish the goal. If you're, if you don't have a vision of what you really, really want to create or the outcome of what you want to create, uh, sometimes that's difficult. Um, but you know, the way you do that is you go and do dream building and we've done an episode on dream building and the dream building piece is making sure that you're, you're going, you're looking to attract to yourself and become um, the kind of person that can live into that reality that is floating around there as that, as a dream outcome uh, for what you want to make happen for yourself. And uh, all I can say is that um, you need to do the work. Okay. And you actually have to sit down, go over, review the goal, say, Hey, you know what, make this better. Maybe I can use some better uh, adjectives in describing my goals. And these are the things that will allow those little improvements uh, to take place. So you start to stretch and stretch. 
one of the uh, goals I have in my direct sales business is to hit another rank uh, in the company I'm in. And I've had that goal for about two years now. And you know what? <clears throat> um, I'm getting seamlessly close to actually hitting that rank. Now, I go back to two years ago, I knew, I know I can do it. It's not that super scary, but here's the difference. The difference is we went into this incredible COVID period, right? And we had to change up strategy and we had to change up Zoom calls. And we had to change up meeting times uh, versus me jumping on a plane and going everywhere. So, you know, and uh, you'll find that on your way to accomplish your goals, um, sometimes you need to go and say, okay, what's, I'm doing the same thing over and over again, not getting the result. We're getting results. We're not getting the result we really, really want. What changes can we put in place to actually move our business along this direction? One of the other um, uh, trainings I did for, for that particular business was uh, building your business in a pandemic. You know, I'd never done building a business in my pandemic before. <laughs> okay, so, so it's like, you know, everything shut down, can't travel anywhere, there's 14 day quarantine. So you make some necessary adjustments in your uh, daily routine. And that comes from reviewing the goals. If, if the goals that you've set and, and uh, you, you're reading them over and you realize, hang on, I'm in this pandemic and I have to make a change, you got to make some changes. Otherwise, you know, um, you're not going to accomplish um, uh, the outcome of what you really, really want to. Yeah. And I think, Gene, the scary part is, and you can comment on this, the scary part is, is that, you know, and I find this a lot with people is the majority of people don't want to change. <laughs> okay. They're, they kind of get like set in their ways of saying, oh, well, you know, it's, it's comfortable. You know, it's, it's uh, the thermostat has gone on, <clears throat> you know, it's a comfortable, cool, uh, 69, 70 degrees, you know, it's, uh, um, you know, but, but that's the difference. The difference is when you go back and you revisit your goals and your dreams and you say, <clears throat> this is, you know, am I really accomplishing them? Great. Hey, let me push myself this a little bit bigger. And when I say this a little bit bigger, um, I was, uh, I was reading a book about, um, K2, a mountain, and they also made a movie about it. And, <clears throat> um, a lot of the, uh, climbers were talking about, Hey, they had this vision of climbing this mountain and <clears throat> they did all the necessary work and all the training, this, that, and the other. But when they finally got within like 50 yards of, uh, you know, climbing to the top, you know, there's tons of fatigue, the body's tired, <laughs> you're out of breath, you're breathing oxygen, <laughs> you're doing everything you can. And, you know, they finally get up there and they, they, they pin their flag or their color or whatever it is at the top of the mountain. And they sit there and they realize and they bask in the glory for just a few seconds <clears throat> saying, man, we, we've accomplished it because they remember looking at that goal, looking at the top of that mountain from way, way down there. Now they're looking down on the valley <clears throat> and they, and for a few seconds, the endorphins, the rush, the energy was like there. And then Gene, then came the other goal, which is now I got to get back home. Right. <clears throat> And they had to have the same determination, realizing I've made it this far and I got this whole massive trek to go back. And, the, and a couple of the uh, writers were talking about how they realized the first part of re uh, stepping up to that size of the goal was one thing, but the other part of it was, hey, now I got to get back home. And the getting back home became the bigger stretch, the bigger goal for, for somebody to go out, for them to go out and hit. Mm. Now, when you're getting these goals ready, you're obviously writing them down. That's why we have a daily planner. So you're going to put your goal in your purpose statement, which you read every morning. And you'll probably, uh, I'm guessing, uh, as you do, as I do, uh, in our 30, 60, 90 day, one year, five year plans, we have those goals written and interspersed with, within the book. And can you talk about how it's absolutely necessary that A, you write your goal down, B, Make it very, very specific so you don't miss the, the important details. And and how do you write yours? Do you do you write yours in in the um, in the present tense? Like I'm so happy and grateful now that this has happened. Or do you recommend any certain way that people write their goals? Well, yes, you got to write your goals like you're fishing. Okay. Um, what explain I mean that. that. Yeah, explain <laughs> that one. Okay. So you know when you go fishing, you come with all the necessary.
catch the trout, catch the salmon, catch catch whatever you know you're going after fishing, catch whatever fish. <clears throat> and the, and the trick is, it's all great, but then um, you know you're you're bringing everything with you in the ingredient list to say, here's what I'm achieving. <clears throat> and if you think of the word I'm achieving, achieving is like, hey, here's here's what I'm doing, and here's where I want to be. Okay. And, you know, people want to, you know, going fishing is an example of, of hitting a goal. Um, the other thing is you might want to bring along a six pack. Okay. Um, just to enjoy the moment of actually sitting there and fishing and, and being in the moment of the actual fishing. Okay. Cause you know, um, everybody would love to just cast the line and immediately have a, a fish snap and, you know, in, in, enjoy the process. Um, that doesn't happen. <laughs> I've seen it happen. Never happened for me that way. Yeah. Um, you know, so you, you got to write your goals as if you're achieving them. Okay. And it was like, you know, when I went after my dream car, you know, even when I went after my, uh, when I went after my incredible wife, Jessica, I actually wrote down the kind of woman that I wanted to be with, you know, you know, from, you know, sexy, hot, um, incredible mom, uh, all the way through to saying, you know, supportive in the business to make our dream, to make my dream and, you know, our dream a reality. And, and I knew that person was out there, but you know, you, and, and, I, and I bumped into several others along the way, <clears throat> just like fishing. Okay. At the end of the day, you know, this one wasn't one that I was willing to throw back. This is one I wanted to keep. And, <clears throat> but if I didn't write those things, I wouldn't have opened up the door in the universe to say, um, here's what's coming through the door to me. And uh, here's what I'm willing to go through the door on. And those are the goals that I'm talking about. So, you know, how do I write them? I write them as if I'm achieving my goal. And I start a lot of my goals as I am, I am, I am, I am, meaning that I'm, I'm present and in the moment. And if you're reading it, it, it's as if you were present and in the moment with me. Um, and that's how I write my goals. I, uh, a lot of the, the stuff I have on my planner, I'll just show you here, <laughs> you know, um, my spiritual goals, it says I'm asking, seeking, knocking, uh, you know, and looking for God's admiration, right? So what, what does that really mean? Well, you know, this is what I'm asking for. This is what I'm looking for. And, you know, I know that if you put some of this into the universe, the universe rewards it back to you. It actually echoes back at you sometimes greater than what you're putting in uh, uh, as the effort. When it comes down to um, my body goals, which I've, I've, hit, I've hit a good uh, a consistency on my body, um, you know, it says I'm focused on being, uh, having the best uh, physical um, shape of my life. So what does that mean? That means that I understand that I go to the gym and I work out and we use the home gym now with the, during this COVID piece. I pull the, uh, one of the cars out of the garage and we got this nice little setup in there and I can hit my fitness goals. So, but I'm accomplishing them. Um, you know, before I did my, uh, uh, this morning when I got up, I did one on a walk, got prepared because I knew this was going to be happening today as we planned it. And then the other side of it is I, I had my first meal. And I also made sure that I had my cup of coffee with me for going through the process of doing these podcasts so that one, hey, I get a shot of caffeine, but number two, you know, I've got a, a nice cup of coffee and I feel comfortable. All, all this is part of the experience of what I'm putting into my body, what I'm working for. I'm present in the moment of achieving the goal. Now, um, I, I know I'd, I'd like to lose a, probably two or three more pounds to get down to ultimate body fat combination. And that's strictly a, a, a piece of diet, uh, of, of staying consistent for like two or three weeks. And, and you, can, you can hit those goals. In fact, Jessica and I just set similar goals together for what we're doing in fitness together. Um, <clears throat> business, growing the business around the world, growing your business around the world. Um, if you're a listener listening in, you've got to be able to say, who are the people, you know, I'm attracting to my reality, like-minded people who will partner with me to help change the world, and together we'll earn multiple six, seven, and nine figure incomes. It's one of my daily affirmations that I say every single day. <clears throat> you know, that is written in present tense and also it's put into the future. In other words, I'm actually doing it. Okay. I'm actually believing I'm doing it. And <clears throat> that's an important piece. And if you take a look at all the, uh, you know, the business that we have happening globally around the world, I just looked at a report the other day, you know, we're in over in, in our direct sales business. We're in over 140 countries around the world. Now, you know, and, and some of those are on new starts that happened with a person here in, in California, actually. Um, 
And that led to a whole bunch of new people coming on board in different countries. And we were already set up in those countries, Jean, from, uh, previous, from my previous travel schedule. I haven't done much traveling this year, uh, maybe up and down to the beach, <laughs> what have you, uh, grocery store. Um, with what's happened. But the point is that the, the, the groundwork was there now was me plugging into that. So setting those goals and stretching and saying, how do I go and hit the next rank? Or how do I, you know, how do you go and make the next thing happen in, in your life as the listener? You, you need to write them as if you are, as if you are making it happen. And then, you know, um, very much like an actor or an actress, when you get given that role uh, to go out and act it out. You're actually doing what the writer had prescribed uh, and written down in the form of saying that here's what the actor is doing. And you become uh, that actor in essence. So that's what your goals need to be shaped after. And what you're writing down is the, you know, the plan uh, to make that come about. And, you know, and you want them big. <clears throat> Why do you want goals big? You, you need a goal big because when it's easy to achieve, um, you know, it's one thing uh, because it can be done. But when it's difficult to achieve or not absolute certainty, but you believe you can get there, you have a faith, you believe you can get there. What ends up happening is you start doing certain things to say, let's make that goal uh, come available. And <clears throat> during the process of the creativity of you writing down the goal, that's really the beginning step. A lot of people have goals that they want to achieve, but they never write them down. They never review them. They don't go over them. You want to be able to go over them. And, and look here, it's in my planner, right? I've got it right here on, on the screen for everybody there. I have it all, I have it all specifically planned out and, and, uh, and written down. Okay. Uh, and I, why is this important? Because if your life's worth living, uh, you know, and you, if you were writing your own eulogy, okay. What would you want it to say uh, that you know other people would say about you? And if they, if they, if you go through the process of understanding that, you know, we all are going to have an exit uh, phase of our lives, uh, you know, at some point in time in the future. Well, um, you know, what did you do while you were here in this con in this conscious state and 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 making it happen? <clears throat> and that's why being planned and organized is so much fun. Now, <clears throat> Gene. Not everybody's going to go and, you know, do a hundred million and do big, massive things, right? But here's the thing: <clears throat> you won't achieve any of those things if you don't try. Exactly. And the the whole process is you've got to try, you've got to push, and this is what makes the this is what makes the the journey of success fun. Uh, two final things before we get into uh, episode 18, which, by the way, is a checkup from the neck up. That's going to be interesting. Um, I think the aha moment that people may have had during this episode, or if they haven't, I'm going to force it, is the fact that when we listen to you talk about all the goals that you're setting in these various areas, it becomes apparent very quickly that if you close your daily planner and you look on the front cover, not only are these goals, but these are the things in the bigger picture that bring your life into balance. And it's the old thing. Everybody always says, well, I want more balance in my life, but nobody's ever told anybody what the balance consists of. You know what you just did talking about goals. You just described balance in the same breath. Well, <clears throat> I was watching um, Gary Vanderchuk uh, on some of his stuff. And he said, listen, if you have this desire to be, really successful business set goals and make yourself really successful business if you have a desire to say hey you know um i'm i'm working too much and i'm not giving my family any attention then <clears throat> he's like change your goals <laughs> so yeah. you, you change your goals and you know <clears throat> i mean yesterday we were down at the uh beach club here <clears throat> and they know aj was in the pool Alexa was in the pool. It's a, you know, balance is a delicate thing for everybody, right? But if you take a look at the six different pillars that we have, being brain, body, time, people, and money, and you focus a little energy on those on a daily, uh, you know, agenda, and that's what we've done, it, it starts to spiral through all those six pillars in, in, in a good motion, and you end up living life well balanced. You also end up living a life well focused, and you also end up uh, having spontaneous moments where you realize uh, it's good to be, uh, you know, nice to your fellow 
human being, you know, mankind. And what happens there is that uh, the universe rewards this uh, immensely. And I, you know, all I can do is, is tell people, you know, you've been doing it your way for however long. Great. How's it worked out for you? <laughs> Look back at the results. Yeah. Why don't you yeah, give this a try this way and, and let's see what happens in 30, 60, 90 days. And then you'd be like, oh my God, and light bulbs go off. And it's like, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a new chapter of life. Coming up in our next episode, episode number 18, we're going to do what we call a checkup from the nails happening. You're excited. You've got your daily planner, but all of a sudden along comes this thing called a paradigm and it might just mess up your day. So, <laughs> well, we'll get Adam to, uh, we'll get Adam to be the fix up man in our next episode. Thanks Adam. We'll talk to you on episode number 18, a checkup from the neck up. Awesome. In, the in the meantime, do make sure you have your daily planner. Go to the website, 8020365.com, and uh, you'll, you'll get enough material for the entire year. It's about a buck a day. And you need this like you need your cell phone. It gives you direction in your life. So thanks for uh, joining us here in episode 17. We're back next with a checkup from the neck up as living your life well planned continues. I'm Gene Velitis for Adam Vincent Gilmer. <laughs>